Welcome back, artists. I'm Wyatt Paints, and today I'm diving back into that dark fantasy world, Kingdom Death Monster. As you know, I finally got my gambler's chest after waiting for seven long years. Seven years! Who does that? And after the ad in this video did so well, I knew I had to get working on another model. And, and, since Tommy Hutchinson, six, five, four, eight, also wanted to see my take on the gambler himself, I've got my survivors stockpiling on resources and gear, inching closer to the encounter. So I don't have time to waste. I'm gonna grab my brushes, let's get started. Like with Atnes, I'll be painting this with a sub-assembly state so I have an easier access to the harder to reach bits. When it comes to paint style, I kind of took a departure from the overall style I had in mind for my kingdom set, and I chose to go for a vaporwave paint scheme of heavy blues and purples with poppy teals. Starting with his robe, I pulled out somber gray in this bright teal as a highlight, and Daruchi violet for a shade tone. Using the somber gray as my mid-tone here was pretty clutch. Not only did it give me a solid color tone, but it was dark enough for the shades to get deep while light enough for the highlights to glow. Two quick overbrush coats got me started in short order. With the base dry, it was time to add the violet shade, which when layered with the somber gray, it gives it a deep purple tone that is iconic to the vaporwave vibe. Now, while I had a bit of a heavy hand in this in certain areas, it's just as important to keep certain parts clean because I want a good separation of the shade and highlights, even to the point of not concerning myself with setting up for smooth transitions. This is a bit of theming because one of the key aspects of Vaporwave is that occasional chromatic separation like this. So the deepest folds got a second coat and some key highlight areas stayed clean. Now before I move to a highlight color, I want to re-establish the mid-tone somber gray while also giving the Daruchi a harder line of separation that I'm looking for. But I still wanted to maintain as much of that deep shadow purple as I could. To pull that off, I was careful to keep my brush strokes short and perpendicular to the model's details. This way, it keeps the bristles from touching the lower details where we want to keep that shade as the dominant color. Larger, flatter areas, in contrast, receive more full covering coats. Now, before I jump straight to the 100% teal, I mixed a bit of it 50-50 with a somber gray. This middle step will set up similar to an outer bloom of an OSL effect. Hopefully, this will make the final highlight have a similar glow to it and really pop off the model. But to make sure I don't overpaint here and cover up that nice shade in midtone, I'm being very deliberate with my strokes only putting it where I want it and letting the color slowly build up. About the point where I noticed the color shift was a good place to stop and reassess and look whether I needed to add more or not. It is extra important to do this on high focus areas like his bent knee in the back of his cape. Once I had the right amount of what I'm going to be calling underglow, I moved on to the final highlight. With just pure teal, I was using a whispering dry brush to start it and then I went back with a detail brush to punch up a few areas here and there. Before I move on to the gambler skin, I'd like to take a moment to thank my subscribers over on Patreon. I know I say this pretty often, but I'm humbled by your generosity. Thank you. This month, with your support, I was able to get many weeks worth of my favorite nudes. And to say thank you, stay tuned to my future videos for more sexy nudes. You've earned it. Also, a friend of the channel sent me a birthday gift of some resin and Muso Black. They say this stuff is even darker than Black 2.0. I can't wait to try it out on something. Maybe a uh, Black Suit Spider-Man or a Venom or ooh, maybe on a Spawn. Spawn will be cool. <laughs> if you have any suggestions what I should try this out on, be sure to put it down in the comments below, because it might just happen. But for now, let's grab our dice, check our fate, and get back to the gambler. Now the gambler's coat was mostly done, but it needed a bit of something to break up all that blue. I wanted it to be a warm color, so I grabbed my golds to see what worked. Ultimately, bright bronze and glorious gold were used on the trim and tassels. It's good to remember that metallic pigments are larger and heavier than your typical non-metallic pigments, so when using them, be sure to give them a really good shake and thin them slightly more than usual. 
This makes it much easier to get consistent event coverage. Once I was happy with the metallics, I went over them with a Sara from Sepia wash, followed by fairly controlled highlight specks of gold here and there with a bit of edge highlighting. Looking at the coat, I thought about painting the belt differently, but in the end, I decided that this robe was actually one large piece of fabric that was draped and folded over him and cinched at the waist with like another piece of tassel made of the same dream fabric. With the trim all shaded and highlighted, I called the robe done. The next section will be the skin and lanterns. Now since I had picked an extreme color palette for the rest of this model, I wanted the skin to be able to stand out and balance the rest of the piece at the same time. So I landed on a monochromatic ashen skin. This way he could be highly detailed while also having a nice separation and contrast to his coat. Plus it had the added benefit that if I decided I did need a little bit of color, this could serve as an undercoat highlight. The values I picked out for this were matte black, uniform, ash, and starship exterior. Once suitably black, I applied an overbrush of uniform. As with most overbrushes, this is simply a dry brush with much more paint on it than normal and with strokes that can run parallel to the detail so that the bristles can deposit some paint in the crevices. The next step up was ash. Now with a typical dry brush amount of pigment on my brush and using more perpendicular strokes to focus the color on the high points. Finally, Starship gets whispered onto the finest details and a few finishing touches of stippled highlights on his nose and chins. For the final details of his face, mainly his teeth and eyes, they got painted with a bit of bright bronze and some strategic placement of shade to add a bit of contrast for the teeth. Now, I needed to paint the lanterns he was carrying, but unfortunately, the autofocus on my camera just randomly decided that you all would rather see the painting table rather than what I was painting. Uh, I tried my best to edit around it, but sorry for now. So for this lantern, I wanted it to be a bit different from the typical amber hue that the humans had, so I decided to go with the same vaporwave colors here as well. But I needed a few extra details that needed to be nailed. For the wooded bits, I grabbed dark flesh tone, rich leather, and leather brown. Now, small details like this can be pretty intimidating, but not to worry because small details like this do not need years of skill to make look good. You don't even need to do any fancy blending. All it takes is basic layering. So lay down a solid base of the darkest color, then paint the inner area with the next color while trying to leave a small border of the original color. To make it easier on myself, I simplify it by thinking of it as a basic shape. In this case, it's a triangle. For the last color, I slimmed down the triangle to just a spiky line in the center of each section. Next, the body of the lantern got the vaporwave treatment. 
starting with somber blue to give it that nice base to start with. For the shade, I dabbed in the Darucci into areas that looked like they would be deeper parts. To be perfectly honest, I don't really have a tried and true method of paint this, not that, that would work here. I mostly go by feels, like what feels like it needs to be a shadow. Well, this doesn't work all the time. Sometimes in situations where it's ambiguous or you just don't have a clear idea of how to proceed, doing this will push you forward. As I paint, I'll find myself liking how a section looks and replicating it other places. While I typically finish these things off with a single pass of a final highlight, the truth was I was waffling back and forth with all three of these colors here until I finally got to a place that I liked. To finish and set this look, I did a bit of edge highlighting with glorious gold. I find it kind of wild how sections like this can make me doubt if I really pulled it off and then just magically come together when the final details get added. Because once I finished the gold trim, it was looking like 50 times better. I kinda high fived myself. Now for the final detail, the body ball. And small disclaimer, they are dude bodies, but I think I'm in the clear with you two because they're tiny, this is art, and just to be safe, I'm not gonna be painting them anything fleshy. <laughs> so after I puzzled the ball together, the hard way, seriously poots, either give us instructions in the box or always make sure your website is working because it was not, it, it was not at all. Granted, I was literally painting, I built and paint this during the hurricane, so. And actually, like 20 minutes into an hour after I filmed this, we had our earthquake, the earthquake during the hurricane. So, you know, there you go. 2023, y'all. 2023. So after I puzzled the ball together, I hit it with a bit of black spray primer. That was the easiest way to ensure full coverage of the ball in all the nooks and crannies. Now, I had an idea of doing a two color tone shift across the ball, having a cooler color at the bottom and a warmer color up top. So I grabbed Bad Bruise, Crimson Red, and Elf Skin. For the base, I started with Bruise and Crimson, pure and straight from the bottle. I was using very aggressive strokes and a bit of scrubbing to get the 70 to 80% coverage I was looking for. I made a mix of crimson and bad bruise to paint the center line. If you think of this body ball as a globe, I plan to do this blend at the start of one tropical line and extend it to the other. With that mental geography in place, it became pretty easy sailing through this part. For the highlights, I mixed in some elf skin tone at about 50-50 for each tone. Again, the bad bruise and crimson were fairly simple applications. The tropical line had a slightly different mix of about 40-40-20, with the elf skin being the minority. This ended up keeping it a little bit more on the darker side to help hide the blend more. Now, for this layer, it's important to not do any hard dry brushing or scrubbing. I want to keep this as a typical dry brush pass and dust the tops until I see the color shift up to the highlight hue. After that, it was time to glue our gambler together for the final reveal. Holy smokes, he looks great. I was worried the vaporwave scheme wouldn't fit or just get lost, but not only is it a strong theme top to bottom, but it also lends an even more otherworldliness to the piece so that even within the world of Kingdom Death, the gambler sits alone. There were some tricky bits that tripped me up, but I really did enjoy the overall process of it. It was nice to try out the vaporwave scheme, and while I don't think I'll pull it out as often as I want to, it's going to be a value tool in the tool belt that I can pull out when I need to. 
If you enjoyed this video or learned anything that's going to get you down the path of success on your next painting project, please hit that sub button. I'm wandering my way up to 400 subs and the best way to make that happen is for you to clickety click that button. If you want to see more of Kingdom Death, please let me know in the comments. I absolutely read them. I painted this on a suggestion and thanks to Lee Brown 353, you will all be getting the Crimson Crocodile in a future video. Finally, as always, thank you for watching, stay creative, and always enjoy the process.